In this episode, we'll continue on from previous episodes where we used a cloth simulation filter to classify near ground points in our point cloud. We'll now use that class to create a highly accurate digital terrain model to estimate the true ground surface. Typically, when we create a ground surface from a point cloud, we follow similar steps regardless of what software we're using. Often starting with a CSF to remove trees, buildings, and other obvious off-ground points, then we subsample the point cloud with a specified cell size and take the lowest return for each cell in our data set. The reason for this is twofold. The first being the lowest point every meter or so is probably the point that made it past the grass, shrubs, and other low-lying vegetation the CSF missed. And the second is that if we tried to make a surface from every point in a point cloud, we could end up with a tin surface with billions of triangles, and that was an absolute nightmare to deal with. I made a video on this a few months back on how I do this process in Cloud Compare, and today we'll do more or less the same process, just much faster and better in pretty much every step along the way doing it in Enforce. In the 3D view, we'll turn off all the groups other than the ground group, and in the Point Cloud I.O. tab, we'll make sure height sampling is set to lowest. I'll use a grid spacing of half a meter and a sampling radius of half of that, then click Preview Grid. Now this surface doesn't look great at this point, and there are a few reasons for that. One, there are parts of this point cloud where the vegetation was just too thick and the penetration to the ground wasn't optimal, being that this was captured from a terrestrial scanner. And two, I didn't really clean the ground group of the input point cloud at all, before trying to create a surface from it. As with all things, garbage in, garbage out. But since editing a surface in Enforce is so quick and so easy, I find it can be faster to worry about cleaning the DTM rather than the point cloud that's responsible for the creation of that DTM. Right now, we're just looking at a preview of our DTM and changes can be made very quickly and easily at this point. Now would be a good time to use a section to make sure our grid spacing is tight enough to accurately represent the ground smaller bumps and humps, but not too dense, where it's both a spiky mess that's really heavy from a data standpoint, and a pain to manually tweak. This is always a bit of a balancing act. There are some spikes here and there, and we'll have to remove the vertices around the house and shed because we only had data on the floors of those structures and not under them, but I'm fairly happy with the balance that was struck from a density standpoint. And to turn this into our actual DTM, I'll toggle create as points, keep X, Y, uncheck align to spacing. And now we can see that temporary DTM is now individual points where each vertex was. It gives us a bit more flexibility down the road to create survey points from the vertices and turn those into a DTM. I'll click Create Grid, and if we look at our project manager, we can see all those new points that were created. And if we jump into the model view, we can see those points graphically. Since they're uncoded, they're being visualized by the default code in our code list. We can either edit the default code and change our point style to none so that we can still work with them, but they aren't cluttering up the drawing, or recode these points to a code I have specifically made for my DTM extracted points. And finally, in the DTM tab, in the Create group, click the Normal button and our surface has been created. I'll toggle on Shading and adjust the banding by clicking the DTM's button and adjusting the interval next to the color scheme. We're now ready to clean the surface up a bit. First, I'll use the Remove Apex tool and window out those vertices under the house, pool, sheds, etc. Obvious places where there just wasn't data on the actual ground. We can also delete points within a polygon by going into the list tab in the model view, select the inside tool, choosing feature, which adds them to a temporary list, changing the pick mode to list, then picking the drop down in the delete points tool and choosing indicated. Next, I'll go into the 3D view and look for obvious spikes caused by noise in the data. These can be removed using the delete point tool in the editing tab. Now 
Now would be a good time to cut another section, toggle on slice model in live update, and compare our surface with the points in the point cloud. I like to widen it up a bit and clip the main view. If you see spikes in the section view, you can always delete them directly in there. Now it more or less looks good at this point, but I just need to do some smoothing in certain places. I'll go back to the model view, click the smooth DTM polygon tool, and window those noisy areas of the surface. Turning slopes on and adjusting the annotation scale can help ID these noisy areas. The bigger the arrow, the steeper the slope, and the more likely it is we're dealing with noise. Of course, if the surface actually is cliffy, you certainly don't want to smooth that out. That's another reason that it's nice that we can compare the surface to the point cloud in real time. Now we could smooth the entire surface all at once, and in some cases, that certainly isn't a bad idea. But in areas where there's good clean data on the ground, that can lead to over unnecessarily smoothing, which in turn creates a surface that is less true to what it's supposed to represent than needed. It's our goal to create a surface that best represents what the land is actually doing with the data we have available to us, not to make pretty contours. Now we have something looking much better and from start to finish we're sitting at about 5 to 10 minutes. Not bad considering our input data was far from perfect. Well that wraps up this one, stick around for the next episode where we'll look into how we can digitize trees, poles, signs and other vertical cylinders.